Hello ladies and gents, today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and review of the Win Wing Orion HOTAS F18 replica. So I've been searching for a while online for a new HOTAS as an upgrade for my Thrustmaster T-Flight and I've been looking on Amazon. There's not really much going on to be honest because of Covid and Flight Simulator 2020 everything's either out of stock or ridiculously expensive. So this is just Amazon and then on Scan there's also a lot more availability in terms of sticks but they're either out of stock or just ridiculous. The Warthog is like 8-10 years old. I uh, was a bit in a tricky situation and I uh, didn't really know what to do. Then a friend from work told me to check out these uh, Win Wing manufacturers who make simulators for Cesta and Diamond and they've started making flight sticks. So I went on their website and despite the first impressions which weren't very good to be honest, the website is a bit shabby and doesn't look very legit compared to Verpal's or Thrustmaster's website. But it looked like it had some good products so I had a little browse. I come across the Orion Hotas F18 and I noticed that it's on sale and it's a new product which hasn't been on sale for very long. So after watching some reviews on YouTube and having a little look online, I also asked my friends on Discord what they thought. And no one seems to have one that I, that I play with or that I'm friendly with. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to give it a go. And I thought it would be a good idea to give you guys a proper honest review because the only reviews that are on YouTube are ones that professional YouTubers and DCS players, you know, that are very well known have done. And to my understanding, these guys actually have paid for these flight sticks correct me if I'm wrong but they contact the company or the company contact them because they are well known they have a lot of views they will ask them to review or use their products on YouTube or Twitch and I've got no idea what these companies are actually sending the YouTubers so I thought for a proper honest review I'd go online and actually buy it. I also appreciate the fact that people have a lot of worries when it comes to international shipping from different countries. On the Win Win website it actually does say that there could be a massive delay due to Covid weather and international transport etc. So I did a little bit of extra research just to make sure that my purchase would be safe. Import tax from China to the UK is 20%. You are protected by your bank in case of fraudulent activities or faulty products, etc. Make sure that your bank actually does have that in a clause. I use PayPal and they protect the payments. The only payment you've got to make is one on the Wing Wing website or whatever website you purchase it from and the courier will charge you the import tax when they arrive at your door. For an added extra peace of mind, Win Wing were actually really good on this and they added the FedEx tracking code where I followed the parcel from Win Wing in China to my front door in England. So the packages came in four separate parcels. The only problem here was was that the HOTAS was actually labelled on the outside of the packaging with the picture as well. So if anyone actually knows how expensive these products are, it could possibly pose a security risk over a long transit. But apart from that, these packages were really well sealed with sellotape. So I've taken off the outside cardboard, actually opening the package now. On top you've got the USB cable and some of the tools needed to put the HOTAS together. The cables are actually really nice. I mean they're 2 meter cables and they're gold plated as well. So I'm really pleased that they put some nice cables in there. And they package the HOTAS base with a lot of foam so it can't move around in transit which I'm really pleased about. The box has got labelled on what's in the actual box. The only thing that's missing is the manual, which as they say it is inside the box because there's a tick there, but you can actually get the manual online. Some people might prefer an actual paper manual. I definitely did. Disappointed that women didn't actually put just a small paper manual in there for the assembly. So actually taking the throttle base out now and first feels and first impressions really good. This thing is solid and it's not actually that heavy. I mean, the website does say it's made out of aircraft grade aluminium. 
I believe them. It's really light, but it doesn't feel low quality because of that lightness. All the switches and the toggles feel really well made, really solid, good movement on all of them. I gave them a little check just to make sure they're all working. The only problem was that I found was a little scratch on the back of the throttle base. But apart from that, all the countersinks on the bolts are really good. Quality overall seems okay. Was a little bit disappointed with that scratch on the back, but there's not really much you can do about that. So again, these boxes were even silver seller tape as well. So I'm really pleased with the packaging. It's smart, it looks clean. Everything was packed with foam. These were the throttles. They wrapped them in cellophane. So, you know, they, they have cared about packaging. All the bolts and the Allen keys came in little Ziploc bags, which is really nice. I gave the buttons on the throttle little play of as well. These feel really solid. They are made out of plastic, but it's not cheap. And they all have a good feel and tactile ergonomics to them, which is really nice, especially in VR. You're not going to be able to see which buttons and toggles that your hands are on. So this was a nice addition. They are made out of plastic, but if it's good quality, you know, I actually think it could be better because sometimes metal with the paint and stuff, it wears much more. Definitely seen that with the Frostmaster Hotas on some videos. The stick base, pretty much the same as the throttle base, light in its weight construction, but seemed good quality. There was no scratches or deformities on this one, so I was pretty pleased. The only niggle I could probably say is that the USB connection on the back isn't centralized, but that's the people's preference. To me, it doesn't make a difference, but I know some people that use desk mounts, that could be a big issue. It's like a fake leather edition, similar to a gear stick in a car. Um, it's definitely not leather, but it's just a nice addition. The stick on its own on first looks was actually surprisingly light. I didn't expect it to feel this light and I was a little bit worried that the actual feel of the stick wasn't going to give you much movement, but all the buttons feel great. Ergonomics of how you hold it, I am yet to find out because I haven't played any long amount of hours on it yet, but everything seems fantastic. For a replica, it seems really good. Everything has a really nice feel and tactile feel to it. And I believe that this is extremely high quality product. Okay, so I've plugged both of the USBs in for the HOTAS and we're going to open up SimApp Pro now. So you can download SimApp Pro from the WinWin website, it's on the downloads page, it's pretty easy to find. But I'd recommend you do this before you plug in your HOTAS so everything's set up well. So you're open with this page where you can select either the handle or the grip. I mean, this was automatically done. I didn't have to add anything. You just have to log into your account or create account first. And then you can click on your input. This software is really intuitive. Everything's laid out very clear. It's easy to see all the buttons, all the switches, all the toggles, all the axes. You get a onboard test qualified to show that everything's working. Of course, I did my own test where I clicked all the buttons. Everything's working and you can see I'm moving the throttles there and you can see that the axes are changing and that's an idle. 
to power and if I just click some of the buttons you can see that they just light up green to let you know whether they're working or not and the really great thing about this software is that you can change the amount that the switches move so for example if it's got a native three position switch you can actually change it just to two so it skips out the middle and all this stuff is really good and it's very well represented very well laid out and easy to use so that's the throttle we can go over to the stick now and see the visualization of the axes moving around and on top as well you get a real live graph of what's actually going on like you do in DCS but this is more detailed and like the throttle you can test all the buttons and see if everything works So come out of this and you go into key binding and you can select your input, select the game or the aircraft that you wish to use. So I'm going to go over the Hornet first and then you can just download the presets that some people have put on there and you click run and then they preload into DCS, which we're going to have a look at in a minute. I'm going to load up DCS in 2D mode because I play in VR. So to, to set up all the controls, it's much easier to do it in 2D mode. This is a first time setup. I haven't entered DCS before plugging the joystick in. So this is a real view of what happens when you plug it in for the first time. Okay, so here we are in the 2D mode. I'm going to go straight into options, straight into controls. And already we've got the wind wing base, the throttle base. And we've got the wing wing throttle. This is just a racing wheel that I have that... DCS recognizes as an input. Okay, so we're going to go into the F18C sim page. We're going to see if anything is mapped to the throttle. There looks like a few things already. Okay, so it's got a few things mapped. Yeah, it looks like a few things mapped there. Throttle designated depress hasn't got the uh, left, right, anything like that at the moment, which is kind of annoying, but I can map that quickly. Any other buttons? Yeah, it looks like uh, pretty much everything is mapped bar a few switches most things are just two mapped so when there's three movements on the axes or the button it looks like they're only mapping for two which is fine because i'm going to be mapping all that anyway that's that's personal preference the am ramp so these are not correct these ones i'm clicking the wheel brake and that's telling me that it wants to select the am ramp which is not right and select the gun as well so that doesn't matter oh okay so we've got the sensor control switch which is good that's there and the pickle button is working and the trimmer switch is working but the mappings are a little bit wrong okay so apart from that that looks fine go in the axis assign axis tune okay so that's all working fine yeah we can see it there back and forth yeah so out of the box guys you know this is a really solid setup there's not much tuning you have to do to be honest i think fine tuning is depending on the aircraft that you want to do i've got to work out my detents and how the detents are working but it looks like here that the throttles need to be inverted which is fine, so I can do that, you can even do that in game, which is not a problem. That shadow of a doubt, the Orion Hotas is a fantastic beer kit. In terms of an upgrade from the T-Fly, it is in a class of its own. The usability and the ergonomics of the Orion is classes above the T-Fly, and it, and it should be because the price reflects that. Now, I've only flown a few hours with the Orion, and already I've gotten used to it i feel like my flying is, is going to be more accurate and it's going to be more fluent you can see in this aerial refueling video that the stick movement and the aircraft movement is less erratic it's far more stable i think that's mostly thanks to the actual mechanical cam movement system in the orion hotas whereas the t-flight sure uses some sort of plastic movement also from a visual perspective I'm in VR, but when I'm not using it and it's just sitting on my desk, it looks a lot nicer than the lump of plastic that the T-Flight is. Don't get me wrong, the T-Flight is a fantastic stick and it's served me for probably 8 to 10 years now. I thought that my flying was pretty top notch, not going to get much better depending on the stick, but I was very wrong. This purchase is a fantastic purchase and I'm really glad that I got it because now that I'm going to be flying a lot more accurate. I've been doing a bit of dogfighting as well and it's far easier to use and it feels like you're getting force feedback from the stick because of the cam movement. The, the throttle is fantastic. The only problem I have with the throttle and the throttle base is that the switches are kind of hard to operate when you're in VR. 
and I don't think there's ever going to be a fix for this because you physically can't see it but the feel of them and the way that they are laid out does help apart from some of the switches which are poorly laid out in my opinion such as the air to ground and the air to air switches which are right underneath the throttle and hard to get but apart from that I can't really give you any faults with the stick I haven't had much experience with any other professional flight sticks so this review is going to be a, a bit biased but for the price and for what you get for your money, I don't see how there's any other stick on the market, any other HOTAS combination on the market that is better than this Orion HOTAS. Here is just a comparison of how it looks on my desk. I think it looks a lot better and actually I think it takes up a lot less footprint than the T-Flight. T-Flight is a thick shape where it's got nothing to secure it on the desk. I used to use blue tack, but these suction cups are great. It's a smaller profile. It fits a lot nicer on my desk. I know that some people have been having problems about the suction cups moving a little bit, but I think if you you know if you give and take a little bit and if you do push down a little bit when you're using the flight stick, it is very rewarding. And the fact that it's not a permanent fixture, it's not mounted to stands that are on my desk that are in the way all the time, it's just on there. I think it's a, a fantastic addition to anyone's flying equipment that they may have so the verdict then to best use this stick i do recommend people that use track ir or just standard 2d screen this stick is absolutely fantastic vr it is a fantastic stick but you might be a bit disappointed in terms of how you can't fully appreciate the flight stick to its full ability because you can't see all the buttons you can't see the lights that are on it that's just one of the things that you choose to have how immersive that your game is because i prefer the vr that means that the sacrifice i have to take is not being able to see any of the buttons or switches the ergonomics of the stick and how all the buttons are laid out and how they feel makes up for that definitely this stick is on sale I recommend you go and buy it right now if you haven't got a decent flight stick definitely do it if you've got the spare cash you know it's it's one of those things where you'll kick yourself when it goes back up in price and you're looking at all the other ones that are very expensive at the moment you'll struggle to understand why you didn't buy it in the first place thank you guys for watching the video i hope you enjoyed it this is actually my first ever upload so if you enjoyed it or you want to watch some more you can follow me on twitch drop a subscribe a like if you have any questions or any tips please put them in the comment section and i'll be sure to look at them and reply bye for now